My name is my name. Greetings, YouTube family. Now tuned in to The Sage. My name is Turner Lamar Air, but for the sake of my mission, I go by The Sage. It's definitely a compound word I put together in regards to my mission. I feel like it describes who I am in regards to the mission I have to carry out while I'm in this physical plane of manifestation. And the Sage has been historically defined as the ones who know. An agent is one who completes or transacts business on behalf of another. I am an agent of the Supreme Council. I am an agent of the higher order, the spiritual realm, God, Allah, whoever you may call it, whatever you may call it, the spiritual being here in the form to help guide and lead you all to spiritual well-being and success, whatever you may define it as. Um, you know, it's, it's December 20th, it's Sunday at 6.48 p.m., I come to you from Illinois and uh, just a little background on me this is my first video upload to YouTube and I've been I've been led this way to do this uh, because of what I've been going through the last few years man it's, it's been a, a, a major transition for me for where I end up now at this point in my life and um, I'm just so grateful who I am what I've come from and what I became but I had to realize that I'm now who I always was. You are who you were before you was what you are. What, what do you mean? What are you saying? That infinite intelligence, that being, that spirit who's wrapped in flesh, this garb of flesh to complete its mission on this plane of manifestation. That's who you are. What if, this not man, man is not the body. Man is the spirit that animates the flesh. Man is mind. So, uh, about four years ago, man, um, excuse me, five years ago, I was, I was, I'm 29 now, so I was 24 years old, you know, I was out here in the streets doing everything, yeah, a little bit of everything, I was, I was caught up, and, um, you know, I was in my lower self, I was in my lower self, I was, I was bound to my ignorant decisions, and I had made several mistakes and bad decisions, it's, it's a difference between making a mistake and a wrong decision. And people fail to understand that. A mistake is when you do something with the intention of a certain effect, but you don't get that. That's a mistake. A bad decision is a decision that you pondered on, you thought about it, and you weighed the, the, the possible consequences, the repercussions, or the ramifications. And you said, screw it. It is what it is. I'm still going to go for it. If I hit, I hit. If I don't, I don't. Then people seem to be all shocked and confused when they end up in a position that they want to be in by way of a bad decision. A lot of people are not really ready to live with certain decisions that they make. That's where we get to the saying, like, you got to be a man. You got to carry your own weight. In all situations, a man never compromises his integrity. Hmm? Will you compromise your integrity for some money? Yeah, we have. We all have. No matter who you are. No matter what walk of life you come from. People have compromised their integrity on certain levels. People know. Some people don't. I mean, to each his own. You know, I don't judge you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm subject to judgment by the Almighty. Why would I pass judgment on you? We sitting right next to you under the same boat. Hmm? So, um, you know, I got, I got, I got caught up with some legal trouble. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, I went to court for a little while. And one day I was at a car shop. I was getting my vehicle fixed on. My lawyer called me, my lawyer, and said, hey, man, you missed court. And I was like, he said, man, you come here. We can get it worked out and we can get everything all settled, man. And at that time, I was out on a $5,000 bond. I was on a $5,000 bond, which was 10% of $50,000. And I didn't trust him. I knew how these people work. This de facto, these agents. I know how they work. I didn't trust them. I never went back. Long story short, I went on the run. I went on the run. I left and I went on the run out of state, nine hours away from where I'm from. I went on the run in Georgia. And I had been going through so many things spiritually up until that point. 
I had begun to understand that something was wrong. Something was wrong. And couldn't nobody explain to me what was going on. I'm sick about it. Mama, I need some answers. Daddy, I need some answers. Brother, I need some answers. Pastor, I need some answers. Oh, man. Nobody knows what's going on. How? That's what your intuition is for. It's for to bring things to your attention. When you don't know what to do by using objective reality and facts, what else do you have? Your primal instinct, your gut feeling, your intuition, as ones may say. But we so doped up, high, drunk, uh, chasing our own petty ambitions and, 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 and held in the vice by our vices. That's why it's called a vice. It holds you. And we're not thinking objective or rationally. I had to see what was going on with my own two eyes, with my own eye. And it came to my attention that something was wrong. Something was terribly wrong, in fact. And um, when, once, once, once I found this out, um, it only solidified what I knew I felt. See, see, a wise man only knows, excuse me, knows only what other people feel. Mm -hmm. That means I can I can see what's going on, with your, what, what's on your mind by the way that you're acting or implying. By way of your, your actions, yeah. I can tell what's going on. So that's one of those things that you have to be able to have and utilize being on this plane of manifestation, being able to see things that nobody's telling you, hey, this is what this is. Can you still see what that is? Hmm? Do you know what that is? So I met these two old women. I used to go to the bar after I would get off work. And I met these two old women. And one thing about it, God speaks to man in two ways. He speaks to man in a small voice. And he, he who wishes to hear it must be still. You can't hear that, that, that tuition. You can't hear that intuition and that small voice that or the revelation that God's bringing to you because you're too busy ripping and running, doing this and that. You don't sit still. You don't even got time to pay attention to yourself. You've been wearing the same drawers for three days. Huh? You've been wearing the same socks for three days. They peel off. They all crusty nuts in the corner when you take them off. Your ass stink. And God speaks to man through man. And this woman must have felt my energy, man. I'm sitting across the room. We make eye contact. And she's an older woman. Reminded me of my grandmother. And uh, we start having a casual conversation. And she says, son, what's wrong? And I said, uh... You know, I gave a, a real generic answer. I was like, um, you know, you know, trying to work, you know what I'm saying, change my life for the better and, and get in tune, you know, da, 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 blah, they skipping. And the lady looked at me like, okay, now what's wrong? And I was just like, man, the truth. And she was like, every bit of it. I said, man, I am on the run. <laughs> I'm not even from here. And she could hear it in my voice, you know, obviously. People from certain areas pick up the accent of people who's not from around a foreigner. But, um, you know, first question she asked me after I thought I was on the run, she said, who did you leave behind? And I said, my children, my two youngest boys specifically, because I was still in a relationship with their mother and her. And she raised her hand like, I should slap you. I was like, man, I deserve it. And um, she gave me a very passionate talk. She said, I reminded her of her grandson. She said, she keep telling me, go back home and go deal with this. And I seen her three times. I was working a job as well. And the last time I seen her was on a Friday. And she told me last time, she said, go home. And once she told me that, I, I, I just couldn't even resist how I felt after she kept telling me that. And I, I made it up in my head. I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm going to get ready and get up out of here. I'm going to go home pack it up and, and go on back home. But, um, you know, long story short, the following Tuesday came around. I went to go get my check from work. And uh, coincidentally, the foreman at the work site said, all right, guys, that's it. And I'm thinking like, man, we got a lot of work to do. We we, we, we off for the day. He's like, no, it's a temporary job, man. It's over with. You guys have fun. Make sure you report your taxes to the IRS. I'm like, what? What's 
Uh, that's even more. That's 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 even more uh, 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 confirmation on the message that the woman was giving me. So I left and I went back home to Illinois, and I made it back home. And on the way home, man, I remember I was on a nine-hour drive from uh, Atlanta to Springfield, Illinois. And on that nine-hour drive, uh, I was just on YouTube, and a video come across the feed, and it says, Admiralty Law, your red pill. Go check it out. It's still on YouTube right now to this day. First video I ever seen in the direction that I'm headed now. And I listened to this video six times, I believe so. And a, a, a dry tear just rolled down my face. And I couldn't help but to say, like, I knew it. I knew it. I had been in trouble since a young kid. I started smoking weed when I was 12 years old. 13, I was already in juvenile. Juvenile, at 13 years old, running back and forth, running away from the home. Going to live with my grandma, my aunties, my mom, my pops. They did what the, they did the best they can do. I just bucked the structure. You couldn't tell me to fall in line. I didn't know how to do that. Go work a job. I have nothing against people who work. If that's what you consider an honest living, this and that, you got to understand the day and age that we live in now. The only way to make there's not only one way to make a living. Period. I could boil my hot dogs. You can fry your hot dogs. He can cut his and put them on a skillet. They all get cooked. There's multiple ways to do the same thing. And we're definitely in a, a diverse era. You can get rich doing anything in 2020. And it's, it's the turn of year. In a few days, it'll be 2021. But um, the, the particular thing on this video that caught my attention when I started studying law was the word person. I'm like person in a casual conversation between two laymen, people who are not studied or versed in the law or look at things in, in a legal definition. You think person, yeah, like two human beings, people. Hmm. Well, I just so happen to have a Black's Law Dictionary right here. And this is the fourth edition. You can get you one of these used, you'll never find one new. And the best thing about getting a Black's Law Dictionary in this edition is before they started, they, the de facto, the powers that be, tainting the definitions of words. If you go look in the Webster's Dictionary from the the, 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 1800, the 1800s and look at look at the look at the word American, any of the various colored, copper colored skin people who inhabited North America before European colonists settled. That's the definition of American. How you got your Europeans who come settle on your land? They making songs. This land is your land. This land is my land. Blah, blah. They got you holding your hand over your heart, pledging allegiance to their corporate flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, and you you, you will get sanctioned in school if you didn't stand up for the flag. They they, they tell you get trophy for that. Pledge your allegiance. To a de facto, you pledge your allegiance to the matrix. Huh? I pledge my allegiance to the most high. And I'm exercising the five highest principles known to man. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And I hold that dear to my heart. So the word person, in a legal context, is... And this is before the definition will change. This is the Black's Law, 4th edition on page 1299. Person, a man considered according to the rank he holds in society with all the right to which the place he holds entitles him and the duty which it imposes. The word in its natural and usual signification includes women as well as men. Hold up, hold up, hold up. According to Black's, uh, Black's commentary, Blackstone's commentary, it says the term may include artificial beings as corporations. Hmm. Wow. How are you able to include a corporation into the context of a person? 
because a corporation is an extension of a human. It's entitled to certain rights. Hmm, understandable. But so what what that what what that got to do with anything? What 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 are, you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with everything. Point blank period. Once you're dealing with this government, this de facto, these state agencies or whoever, you better know who you're dealing with and where you stand and what position that you hold within this transaction. Hmm? Hey, that person right here, if, if, if the word person is defined in, in different ways, you have to specify which person you're speaking. Do you or do you not? So, let's go and look up the definition of the word person in the United States Code. And you can find this in 28 USC 3002, Section 10. And once you, love the, you, once you study these things and you get them on your dial plate, you're able to use on your feet. You don't, have to, you don't have to do none of that. That's why you keep it right here in the front of your dial plate. So ain't somebody over here trying to kick something to you, you, you know how to decipher what they're saying. Okay. What do we have here? Okay, what do we have here? In the United States Code, Chapter 28, Section 3002, Sub, uh, sub chapter, uh, subsection 10, the word person includes a natural person, including an individual Indian, a corporation, a partnership, an unincorporated association, a trust, or an estate, or any other public or private entity, including a state or local government, or Indian tribe. <laughs> they just gave a def they just defined 10 different things within the definition of the word person where do you stand so if you're reading a legal document and the united states code says the person conclude this this and that did they specify what type of person they were speaking to because in in the same in the same chapter the same section 28 usc 3002 it says the, U the united states includes excuse me the united states means a federal corporation. Hmm? Big business. And a lot of people deal with their emotions, but Donald Trump was suitable for the job. He a billionaire for a reason. I don't get into politics. I could care less. It has nothing to do with me. This is my politics. Understanding and correcting your status within this matrix. Hmm? That's what you need to understand. So if you made a presentment by a, a state or local government or any of these other persons, how can a corporation attain parity with you? A corporation is, is a piece of paper. Somebody had an idea. I'm going to name my corporation ABC, Corp, LLC, or whoever, and they give you what's called the Articles of Organization. A corporation is a paper. So with the United States being a federal corporation, how do they attain authority over you? Anyone? Contract. Contract. Contract is the law. The law is contract. Contract contracts can be expressed or implied. You imply by your actions a contract. You standing outside on in, on in Times Square in New York and you, you you whistle for a taxi, he pull up, you board his vessel. That's a contract. You implied by sitting your ass in this back seat that you were going to pay for a ride. That's a contract. Understand and overstand. All right. Disclaimer. This is not intended to be legal advice. This is for educational and informational purposes. I am not an attorney or expert on uh, taxes or anything else that may fall within the realm of the discussion, seek yourself competent counsel and be advised. Um, yeah, so understand this: with everything that's going on, all these distractions that you have away from the truth of the matter. How did you get here? Have you ever sat still 
no matter where you are in your life, and ask, how did I get here? I just did three and a half years in a federal prison. Terre Haute, Indiana, the medium, very active yard. I seen a lot. I seen a lot. I'm 29 years old. I'll be 30 March 11th. I wake up. It's 5.30 in the morning. Guys outside the door shooting dice. Somebody screaming across the range. Somebody in their room having an episode because they done smoked some dope. Somebody going to get stabbed today. Somebody going to get beat within an inch of their life today. Somebody going to get their skull split open with a sock with a lock in it. Not a soap, but a lock. Hmm? I wake up staring at the ceiling. How did I get here? But guess what? They don't care what you did wrong. They don't care about Timmy, Tim, Tim, who got gunned down in the middle of the street. Did they care about that? You impede in commerce. In the Code of Federal Regulations, Chapter 27, Section 72.11, it says that all crimes, whether state or federal, are commercial. Commercial. Hmm? It's about commerce. Everything is commercial. Your actions are commercial. Even you breaking the law has value in the public arena. Do you know how to conduct business? So guess what? <laughs> they talking about coppers and robbers. No, man. It's, it's, that's two fangs on the same snake. How can a cop be a cop if you don't think like a criminal? Hmm? He one check from being he, he one check from being your cellmate. He one check from sitting in, in, in the cell doing time like the rest of the criminals that he swore to protect society from. He's a criminal right along with him. Commercial, murder, extortion, robbery, fraud, keeping house of ill fame, prostitution, illegal gambling. Anything that you can think of is commercial. Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 2 says there's only one form of action known as the civil action. Oh, what do you mean, bro? It's uh, this is criminal and civil. How did you? It's all the same in nature. The only reason it's criminal because there was a violation of a contract. Well, what do you mean? If how do I have a contract with the United States government? How do I have a contract with the, the state of Illinois, or the state of Massachusetts, the state of California, wherever you stay? Where's the contract? <laughs> it's your duty and obligation to figure that out. Hmm. Social Security, driver's license, gun license, vehicle registration, voter registration. Have you been contracting? Can they type your name in their database and find you and where you stay and lay your head? These gangsters, these thugs, if somebody woke, walked up to your door who worked for McDonald's and they had a badge and a gun on their waist and said, hey, I represent McDonald's. You're in violation of penal code blase skippy. You challenge their authority. Like, dude, who the hell are you? Man, get away from my door. What are you doing here? I don't owe you any duty or obligation. What the hell McDonald's got to do with anything? Who are you? You will challenge this authority. You will be willing to put your life on the line to protect your family. And your household. Yeah, same thing as these de facto officers. These are not real officers of the law. For there to be a crime within the common law, there has to be an injured party, a corpus delicti, Latin, for the body of the crime, the injured party. You walk over there and slap that man in his face? That's a battery. Who's the injured party? Him. The closest thing to real court that you see nowadays is Judge Judy, Judge Joe Brown. When two people who have an issue against one another come into the courtroom and present their case, they're not represented by an attorney. They're not represented by a, a lawyer. They present their case, and whoever gives a greater weight of evidence has a ruling in their favor. That's the common law. You walked across the street, but you didn't stand within those two lines. <laughs> now you got to pay a fine. Who, who, who you injured? Seatbelt ticket? Granted, it is for your safety, but 
A laws are meant to protect, not to compel performance. You can't compel me to perform an action that I don't feel suitable. If I don't want to wear my seatbelt, I won't wear it. But who am I injuring but not wearing it? I have the right to disregard my safety or regard it. But that's my right. It's all about big business, man. It's all about making money. But you're just a pawn. I play chess. A pawn is a powerful piece. But if you're not the king, you're a pawn. The king is the object of the game. But he has the most limited movement on the board. A queen is a high-powered pawn. A bishop is a high-powered pawn. A rook is a high-powered pawn. A judge is a high-powered pawn. A sheriff is a high-powered pawn. A bailiff is a high-powered pawn. A city PD officer, he's a high-powered pawn. And who are we? Just the peon pawns. You get sent off first. You get locked up. You get killed. DCFS take your kids. Hmm? You go up there to the welfare office and ask for every type of assistance you can get. Then wonder why you, <laughs> you're compelled to perform on the thousands of statues that's listed within the books of your local government. Hmm? Understand, understand, and overstand. When you register anything, you give up the legal title holding right to that property. It's been a long journey, and this is my introduction. My name is Turner Lamont L. Moorish American National. I'm not a citizen. I'm not a United States citizen. I live in Illinois, the Republic. According to the law, United States citizens is someone who stays or resides on a federal territory. Puerto Rico, Guam, the District of Columbia, the Mariana Islands, the Pacific Trust Territories, the Canal Zone and so on and so forth. These are federal territories owned by the United States, the legislative federal United States. How am I a United States citizen? Oh, because such citizenship was conferred upon me by way of the 14th Amendment. When did I agree to that? Become a citizen, you have to be naturalized. I, I've never been to a court who, who naturalized me. Have you? I'm a national. And no, don't let nobody ever call you. If you know the law, please do not, please, for your sake, do not let anyone ever tell you you're a sovereign citizen. You sovereign by your existence. A sovereign is subject to no one, but a citizen is. How are you a sovereign citizen? The two words fundamentally do not go together. They're not coherent. How are you a sovereign citizen? I'm sovereign by my existence. I accepted the mission that I'm here to embark on. I accepted it before I manifested in this flesh. That's why I am the sage. I'm one of the ones who know. I'm an agent of the higher order, the Supreme Council. I've been delegated authority to act on behalf of Allah. God. Whatever you may refer to it as. This is my introduction. Welcome to my channel. Subscribe and like. You will find this information useful. Have a good night.